Hello, today's lesson is going to look at the glacial landscapes topic. I will be focusing primarily on glacial landscape features as well as Ordnance Survey map features that go along with these landscape features. This topic appears as section one in the exam paper and it is, as you can see, a physical environments topic. This is a paired topic with coastal landscapes and you will have studied both of these landscapes together. You should therefore avoid question two in the exam. It will likely be linked to your ability to read an Ordnance Survey map and identify the main glacial landscape features using the OS map. The first question you encounter in the exam is very possibly going to be the requirement to explain the formation of a glacial landscape feature and this question is typically worth four marks. The second question you will identify or come across in the exam will be to identify these features. These questions can be worth three or four marks. What I'm now going to do is show you the main learning outcomes as well as some sample exam questions which you can practice in your own time. Okay, let's have a quick look at the learning outcomes that make up the glacial landscapes topic. They're grouped into two main areas. The first learning outcome here is your ability to identify them using a photograph or a diagram that you might be provided in your exam paper. The second main learning outcome relates to your ability to explain the formation of one of the four features, the Corrie, the Arete, the Pyramidal Peak and the U-shaped valley. Now, as you don't know which one you are going to be asked in the exam, you will need to make sure you have revised all four, and I will show you some examples of how to approach that. The third main learning outcome is very similar to the second one. It just involves your ability to draw an annotated diagram that explains one of those four features. The second main group of learning outcomes relates to your ability to identify a range of glacial landscape features using an Ordnance Survey map, which will be provided to you in the exam. The features that you need to be able to identify include the Corrie, the Arete, the Pyramidal Peak and the Uche Valley, but also include the Ribbon Lake, a Hanging Valley and a Truncated Spur. A second learning outcome is your ability to describe these glacial features on the map using their contour patterns. Finally, you need to be able to use six figure grid references to identify these different features on a map if you are asked to do so. Okay, the physical environments topic, as relates to glacial uplands, will always contain one exam question that asks you to explain the formation of, and then it will be one of the features. Now, this could be the Corrie, this could be the U-shaped valley, but it could also be the pyramidal peak or the Arete. These questions will always be worth four marks, and therefore you are looking for four points that explain this landscape feature. The question will also say you may use diagram or diagrams in your answer. Now that's important because it doesn't say you must, it will always say you may. This gives you the freedom to either write your answer or to draw a diagram with very clear annotations that explain how the feature forms. And this could be one diagram or it could actually be a sequence of diagrams. What I suggest you do if you want a little bit more revision on this, you may choose to visit the Time for Geography website, which you can see down there. And this explains all of these features in quite a lot of detail. You'll also get some good diagrams on how to draw a Corrie, Pyramidal Peak, Arete and U-shaped Valley from the GeoResources website indicated there. Let's have a little look at an approach you could take for these two features. So here we can see a diagram that outlines a Corrie and it's been done through three steps. And in the first step, we can see the glacier actually building in a hollow prior to the ice age. It is snowing, the snow is building up and compressing into ice. The weight of gravity and of the glacier itself will cause that ice to start moving. Now this occurs at the start of an ice age and in a hollow. Step two shows the actual process in which the glacier creates the Corrie. The hollow is deepened and it is deepened by the movement of the glacier causing two processes of erosion to occur. The first of these is plucking, where rocks are pulled from the mountain itself. And this is because the glacier freezes around the rock of the mountain and rips it away. 
The second process is called abrasion. And this is where the rock that is contained within the glacier starts to scrape away at the mountain in a process similar to the sandpapering effect that you would do if you had sandpaper and wood. Over time, the hollow gets deeper, the back wall gets steeper. You can also see they've indicated that the glacier is moving because of gravity. In our final step, our diagram shows us the quarry after the Ice Age with its steep back wall and its over deepened hollow. It is now full of a small round lake known as a tarn and it has a lip at the front. The student has also indicating that the mountain continues to break up, especially at the back wall, through a process known as freeze thaw, which is where water gets into cracks, expands at night when the temperature drops, and this eventually causes rocks to break off. This answer would easily score you four marks in explaining how a quarry forms. Similarly, this example shows us a U-shaped valley. The key steps involved in the U-shaped valley are the step one before the Ice Age, we have a river valley or a V-shaped valley being eroded by a river. We also have hillsides that come down to the river known as interlocking spurs. During the Ice Age, a glacier will have filled this valley as we can see in diagram two. And it is moving through the valley because of gravity pulling it downhill. You could choose to explain how the glacier forms through snow being compressed into ice to pick up an additional mark at this point. The student has indicated that the weight of the glacier is pushing down and eroding the valley. Also, we can see in this diagram that the two processes of plucking and abrasion, which I just mentioned in my previous answer on the quarry, are also wearing away this valley, making it deeper and wider. What you might choose to do is explain what plucking and or abrasion are, and you'd be given additional credit for actually explaining how these two processes work. In the final diagram, we can see what is left behind after the Ice Age. We now have a very deep valley with steep sides, a flat bottom. You may find a hanging valley coming in from the side. Your steep sides are known as truncated spurs, and the valley may very well have a U-shaped uh, ribbon lake in it, as well as possibly a misfit stream, which is a stream which has not created that valley. This final diagram isn't necessary. You would be able to get marks for the first two, assuming you had put all of those labels with annotations in. In this first example, we can see three of the features and four six-figure good references. This skill involves you going to each of these six-figure good references and checking to see whether one of these three features is present. Now this is worth three marks because you are identifying three features. What you'll notice in this question is that there are four options. Now this means that one of these six-figure good references will be a location on the map that does not include a feature. In the second example of this type of question, we can first of all see it is worth four marks because it's a slightly higher order skill. What you're being asked to do in this example is to use your map to identify any four different glacial landscape features. And you must give the six figure grid reference for those four different landscape features. So these would include the quarry, U-shaped valley, the pyramidal peak, the arete, the ribbon lake, the truncated spur, or at the U-shaped valley. In our final example, we don't need to use the Ordnance Survey map. We are given the contour patterns for three different features. We are given four choices. In a similar way to the previous question we just looked at, one of these would be inaccurate because there are only three diagrams. Just a quick bit of a revision. Let's just have a quick little look at the contour patterns. Contour pattern A shows a couple of corries on either side and a very narrow ridge with the contours rising up to it. That is a contour pattern very common for the arete. So A would be the arete. B shows us curving contour patterns, a bit like the letter U, around a feature which in this case would be a tarn. 
So we have a Cori here. This feature may actually be quite close on your map to feature A. And finally, feature C shows us a big wide flat area with no contours. Running diagonally through this is actually a river. And then we have contours very close, rising from 500 meters up to above 700 meters, indicating we have a steep valley side. This feature would be the U-shaped valley. In this example, therefore, the pyramidal peak is the false answer. Okay, on an ordnance survey map, contour patterns appear in a variety of shapes and they indicate the features by certain clues. Probably the most obvious feature to spot on an ordnance survey map is the corrie. We can see a really good example of a corrie here because we have the curving contour lines. They're close together and we even have the key clue of a small round corrie loch known as a tarn. Sometimes corries can actually be named in Scotland with this name. This is the Gaelic word. If your map comes from Wales, you may very well see the word cum, C-W-M, appearing in the corrie as an indicator. Other clues of your corrie is that at the back of your corrie, you may see the cliff symbol, which I am showing here, and this indicates the steep back wall. You may also see this feature here all around the back because this is a scree slope with rocks breaking off the mountain because of freeze thaw. Another feature shown on this Ordnance Survey map is the pyramidal peak, which is here. Pyramidal peaks are also relatively easy to spot because they are the summits of mountains. So you should be looking for a spot height with a height on it, 1,258, or you may see a small little blue triangulation pillar symbol with the height of the mountain. Another key clue that it is a pyramidal peak is it's likely to have a name like we can see here with the Angel's Peak because the summits of the majority of mountains in the United Kingdom have names. The arete is a feature very close to the pyramidal peak and often has corries either side of it. We can see a number of arets on this map. We can see arets here and leading up to our pyramidal peak here, here and here. There's more than likely to be one arete visible and it's very likely you will see the cliff pattern. Either side of your arete you will have contours very close to each other, indicating that it is a ridge leading to the summit of the mountain. Now let's have a look at another Ordnance Survey map that shows a number of our other features. On this map, we can see a U-shaped valley traveling from north to south. How do we know this is a U-shaped valley? First of all, we have the steep sides on either side, and we have a relatively flat valley floor with very few contours indicated here. We also have a small misfit stream known as the River Dee, running through the base of this U-shaped valley. This valley here in itself is a U-shaped valley. However, it is a hanging valley as it is actually higher than this valley here. This would be a hanging valley, but it is formed in the same way as a U-shaped valley. We also, in this map, have a truncated spur, which is the side of the mountain over here and over here. These are vertical sides to the mountain. In this example, we can see another U-shaped valley, and we can also see a truncated spur with the contours close together, and the truncated spur lies right next to the U-shaped valley. Down here, we can also see what looks like a small ribbon lake. I have another example of a much more obvious ribbon lake to show you in a second. This little feature here looks a lot like a U-shaped valley as well, but as it's coming in from the side, and it has steep contours, and it's joining into a much larger U-shaped valley, this is an example of a hanging valley. In this final example, we can see some clear evidence of a ribbon lake. Now, a ribbon lake is much larger than a tarn. You can see that this lake is covering more than one square kilometer. Here's one square kilometer. It's quite narrow, and it fills a U-shaped valley. You must be careful not to confuse ribbon lakes with tarns on your map. Okay, that summarizes the different skills and contour patterns needed to require to answer the second exam question, which would appear in your exam in question one. <laughs>